Hi, my name is Ben. Some people might call me a pastor. Some people call me dad. But just call me Ben. I'd like to tell you a story. Um, 25 years ago, I shouldn't have met my wife, but I did. There's a thing called divine appointment, and I believe in it because I shouldn't have met my wife. She lived about 30, 35 minutes from me across from town. We lived in separate towns. We led separate lives. She was two years older than me, about to go into college. I was about to be um, a sophomore in high school. Um, she was a young African-American female. I am not. I am a Caucasian male. Um, again, very different lives. Um, she and her mom were out shopping, celebrating her graduation. I was at work in the drive through at McDonald's. And uh, this is a completely true story, by the way. She and her mom always go through the drive through They just were on a hurry. For whatever reason, I think she had to go to the bathroom or something. And they just happened to come inside while they're inside. They said, well, let's just get the food while we're inside. And I was a runner, which means that um, instead of presenting the food at the window um, or taking the money at the first window, I get the food. You know, I would uh, look at the order on the screen and bag up the food and present it to the person handing the food out. So you would see me running back and forth. Um, so her mom comes and her come up to the counter and she sees me. Now she doesn't have her glasses on, which is important for the story because I am, as I said, two years younger than her. So all she sees in her opinion is a young, handsome guy, approximately her age. Um, and, and I should also say that she's kind of shy, but she's feeling her oats because she just graduated. So she asks her mom for a pen. Her mom says, well, what are you doing? She says, come on, grab a pen. She jots down her number. She says, oh my goodness, what are you doing? And she jots down her number on a napkin and asks one of the young girls on front line, the counter, the window as they call it, and says, can you give this to him when I leave? And she says, who? And says, motions to me. And of course, I'm running for drive through a very busy store. I'm oblivious to whoever's on the front line. I'm just trying to keep up because I had a very, very dragon lady for boss. And uh, so, needless to say, she leaves. Uh, my coworker comes and presents me with his folded napkin and says, here, you know, I, I don't know what you, what, what is this? And uh, she says, uh, the girl wanted me to give you this. You know, I, I open it up and I said, no, uh, hi. Uh, my name is Nikki, and I'm a junior. <laughs> I'm a junior in college, blah, blah, blah. You know, give me a call. Maybe we can go out. And I said, what is this? Is this a joke? She said, I don't know. Girl gave it to ask me to give it to you. Okay, I put it in my pocket. I didn't get off for another six hours, so put it in my pocket, continue to work. It's in the back of my mind, but it, part of me thought it was a joke because, like I said, junior in college, I was about to be... Um, a sophomore in high school. Finish my shift, go home, and um, by the way, I was only working there because um, I had, me and my brother had went to live with my grandmother, and uh, my grandmother could not afford to provide everything I needed, you know, for high school, um, so she, she informed me I needed to get a job. You know, I mean, I was 16, so I figured I should get one anyway, you know, provide, for, help provide for my own stuff. Even if she hadn't informed me to, I, I probably would have, but I did. Um, so I was working there um, and happened to be working that day. So again, all these little pieces falling into place that happened to put me there in that drive through where she could see me. If she had, even if she had went through that drive through she wouldn't have seen me because I wasn't at one of the two windows. Um, so she happened to come aside. She happened to see me. I happened to be working there that day. Um, go home taking the stuff off, out of my pockets, you know, clothes are dirty. Uh, I'm a young man, so again, remember, think about this. Not all guys empty their pockets when they get home. I did. I see the note. I think about it. Is it a joke? Is it real? I had actually already called a girl for a date. Being a young guy, I'm like, well, it's better to hedge my bets. I call her. She, having just graduated, is with her friend, and she's like, oh, um, you know, I'm out. And she, she won't admit it, but she was getting a little tipsy, drinking wine coolers with a friend. Oh, I'm a little busy. Can I call you back? 
or call me back actually. I said, oh, sure. So it was actually a real number. It was a real woman. I was excited. I'll call her back. I'll call her back later. I think it was either that night or the next day. I'll call her back. Same thing. She's busy. I call her back. What I didn't realize is that she was hedging her bets. She had already made plans with another gentleman, another guy. So she was just pushing me off. So call her back. Call her back. Ends up three times telling me to call her back. On the third time, I was getting pretty fed up. And I decided I would just wait for the other girl. Um, so I said, well, you know what? Let me give you my number. You can call me back. She takes my number. I didn't know if she did or not. I gave her my number. I kind of forgot about it. Uh, weekend finishes, and Monday comes. And uh, I had thrown away the note. I thought that was going to be it. But she ended up calling me. Little did I know that she went on that date with that man. And uh, as I said, she's an African-American woman, black American woman. She went out with another white guy. And uh, praise God, he did not think, he, he wanted to test the waters of what it was like to date a black woman. And he didn't like it. Praise God for that. Praise God he was a fool, an ignorant, arrogant, racist fool and didn't like it because here I am. Here I am, 25 years later, with the love of my life. Married 25 years, actually, 27 years later, we've been together. So, and there's other things that I know that helped that happen because I was born with cancer. Her heart stopped when she was five. Um, like I said, my mom had given, uh, given is a nice word, uh, me and my brother, abandoned me and my brother to the care of my grandparents. Um, I was living in Virginia up until that point. So there's all these little things that made that appointment between me and my wife a divine appointment. Now, here we are all these years later, and uh, me and my wife have three beautiful children. Intelligent, smart, hardworking, caring. Um, my oldest daughter has her own son, my grandson. Um, both of my daughters are married. Um, my son graduated high school. He's about to get his license. And again, I know they wouldn't even be here without that divine appointment. So the reason I told this story before I did anything else is because I think you're watching this because of a divine appointment. Again, my name is Ben Underwood. I'm pastor of Prayer Can Help Ministries. My wife is co-pastor. We're co-pastors of Prayer Can Help Ministries. And I just want to thank you for the opportunity to share that story with you and the opportunity to share anything and everything with you from Prayer Can Help Ministries. If you need a Bible, if you need any materials, teaching materials, uh, learning materials, if there's anything we can do that we have within our means, we're a very, very small church. We've been preaching the gospel um, since um, 2010. Praise the Lord but we're still very small um, because we're a home-based church and uh, we do a lot of things on the web. We send things out. Um, we have done funerals and weddings, um, you know, things like that. Uh, but we are not looking to, to grow beyond our means. We are looking to serve God the way he wants us to serve. And so that doesn't mean becoming a mega church. It means serving the needs of God's people the way they need to be served. So that if that means going to someone's home, if that means going to uh, seeing an elder who is a shut-in, if that means praying on the phone, um, having Bible studies in our home, Bible studies in someone else's home, a work-based Bible study. We've had Bible studies at uh, Jerry's Subs and Pizza where we invited um, the employees and customers of a game store and we paid for the pizzas um, and sodas and just invited the kids in and did a Bible study with them. So if you wanted to do something like that, if you're interested in something like that, or materials for something like that, you let us know, and we will help sponsor that, give you materials for that. We uh, published a book, self-published a book, called Empowered Prayers for a Christian Disciple, um, where you kind of like fill in the blanks for your per personal needs. Um, we don't really have many copies of that book left, but we do have the PDF of it. So if you like that, we'd, we'd be happy to send you that. For no cost. Um, we do have in our home uh, Sunday morning services every nine, every Sunday at 9 a.m. If you're interested in coming out for our Bible studies, then contact us. If you're interested in our other services, we're in the, in the links 
In the description, I'm going to include links to other services. If you're interested in any other services, you would need to call, text, or email. And again, I'll include links with those information um, because we'd have to set those up one-on-one. -on -one. Um, because again, this is a home, small church. Uh, it's not a mega church. We don't have ministers over there, everything. We do have a pastoral staff, Nicole and I, and then we have deacons. So if you want to pray with someone and you're not interested in praying with a man or you feel uh, you've been hurt by a man, again, my wife, Nicole, is co-pastor. We have youth deacons, male and female. So you have someone that can talk to you, pray with you, minister to you, counsel you. There's uh, Just because we're small doesn't mean that God hasn't provided a someone to reach out to you or minister to your particular situation. Because God knows what's going on and he's prepared for it. Um, and most importantly, so does Jesus. Jesus was made flesh so that he could know our infirmities. He could know our weaknesses. And that's what's most important. And that's why, again, I wanted to share that story because, you know, you may be thinking, even though you've watched it this far, if you've made it this far, praise God, thank you. Um, you may be thinking, well, I don't want to because I, I'm an atheist. So was I. You may be thinking, oh, I'm a backslidden Christian. So was my wife. You may be thinking, oh, I'm a Jew. So was Jesus. So was his disciples. You know, whatever the case may be, it doesn't matter. Jesus said, come to you, come to me, who all you are heavy laden and burdened down. He doesn't care. You know, the gospel is the good news. So he said, come to him. Come to him. It's, his good news is for all. It's, the Bible says it doesn't matter, Jew or Gentile. That covers the entire human race. And it says before him there is neither male nor female. It says he, he plays no favorites. And I am paraphrasing, but that's really what it breaks down to. He doesn't care who you are, where you're from. There is no race, no religion. And any church, any pastor, any Christian, so-called Christian that preaches that or teaches that, isn't a Christian, a pastor, or a teacher of the gospel. They're a liar. And they have, no, they have no right to teach that. They have no right to preach that. That's not real. That's not, that's not Jesus. That's not God-centered. That's a lie. And that's uh, the devil. Uh, and again, in the links below, I will include a link to our beliefs. Um, because we are um, non-denominational. But we do kind of have a Pentecostal charismatic flair. Um, the elders of the church do speak in tongues. So some people don't like that. I'm sorry, but we do. Um, but if you do invite us to, to a wedding, um, or if you do invite us to a dedication or a baptism, and you don't want us to, you let us know. <laughs> we won't. I'm not going to come and, 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 and perform a, a funeral for your loved one and break out in tongues and embarrass you. I would never do that. That is totally inappropriate. But I am a licensed, ordained pastor. And again, I would be totally respectful of your family's wishes. And, there to, and we'd be there to minister uh, to your needs and the needs of your family and your loved ones according, again, to the, to the, to the Spirit of God because He is the one that, that tells us to, 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 to weep with those who weep and to rejoice with those who rejoice. So um, I, we would never do that. Uh, and again, we would never be those who look for ways to hurt people, but instead build each other up in our most holy faith. And again, if you are sick or shut in, please use our YouTube videos, um, which again, we'll share a link in the description below. Um, and please forgive my website, our website. Um, it is my own design. <laughs> I am not a webmaster, uh, even though I am burdened with that task. Um, it is it is affordable uh, it is and again since we're a small church we we make do with what we can we're not here to make money we're here to preach the gospel we're here to try to help people um, so we don't during service we don't pass a collection plate we don't interrupt service for tithes and offerings we don't believe in tithes we do believe if god lays on your heart to offer then you do that but do it before service do it after service uh, we do have a PayPal page. You do it through that. However God leads you, but do not interrupt service because that's about connecting to God, honoring God, and fellowship. The offering has nothing to do with that. Um, if you ever have any questions, that's, that's what's important. Questions, because the only questions that you should feel bad about are the ones you don't ask. 
because then they won't get answered. Again, my name is Ben. Please call me Ben. If you're a Christian already, don't call me Brother Ben. Because if I'm your brother, then call me Ben. My, my brother Patrick, he doesn't call me Brother Ben. He's Ben. And when we were little, he called me Benji. But, you know, Ben. And if you're not a Christian, calling me Brother Ben is just weird. So <laughs> just call me Ben. It's all right. And if you're younger than me, you know, don't call me Mr. Underwood or, or you know, just Ben. It's all good. All right. Well, again, thank you. If you watched this far, really, thank you. I know I talk a lot, and uh, I'm not the most pleasant to look at. So hope you have a great day, and uh, Jesus bless you. Bye-bye.